So what <laughs> should the Giants have done as this was unfolding? Because you know what it's like when you're in the middle of a game, whether you're on the field or you're on the sideline or you're up in the booth, that collective effort to try to spot what's happening, what are they doing, what can we do to counter it, how can we change the tire on the moving car? I know I overused that, but it's the perfect metaphor sure. for trying to fix something while you're already in the middle of the thing that you're trying to fix and you just can't. What could they have done last night to try to counter this? Yeah, it, it, it's tough, you know, because there's there's certain plays where you look at it and you go, Wait, they got five blockers, you know. Oh, they actually got six here, and it's four rushers, and they're still getting in. And then Seattle got to the point where they said, wait, no, we're going to rush five every play because we're, we're like someone's going to win the one-on-one -on -one so quickly that it won't matter, and we're not really scared of anybody on your team down the field, so we're just going to do that. But, Mike, it, like, that's where, hey, you want to vary up. Like, let's keep in six, seven, maybe eight guys. Let's let him have a play every now and then where he can feel like, hey, I got a fortress in front of me, and maybe J Jalen Hyatt can run a 20-yard out route or a, you know, a little slant go and 20-yard comeback, whatever, something like that where you can work down the field. It's that. It's screen game. And then it's also maybe you just send everybody out. Hey, if they want to just get out, let's send five L and just get it out quick and play that way. You know, but there you're right. There was kind of like they tried to play it in the middle, like, hey, we'll still figure this out and be able to block them. And it went on too long before there was any drastic adjustments or any adjustments really for that matter on the Giants and that side of the ball. And the problem is when it's all so sudden and abrupt and it doesn't stop, when do you even get a chance to try out anything different? Like you're just trying to catch your breath. You're drowning. Yeah. And you can't even get back to the surface of the water to figure out how to swim. You're just stuck, and it was never ending. It really was amazing. And you got to credit the Seahawks for sticking to that plan. No doubt about they it. Didn't You're, let right. Up. You're right. You're right. They let those guys loose. They knew it was working. Why Re change Rewind it? that That's play, guys. Rewind it. that play right there. Look, Mike, these are four-man rushes. Like, look, look at these plays here. This is... This is three linemen and a linebacker. Go ahead. Let it play from here. It's three linemen and a linebacker. Look at this. Watch how they go through, and, and, and three of the guys on the Giants don't touch anybody. Let it play, guys. Go ahead. You you. I mean, it's a four-man rush. I mean, he's got one guy. He dodges him instantly. It's Here's another four-man rush. We don't even touch him. You can't even look downfield and go, oh, hey, the first read's about to be open. That's another four-man rush. And then you're right. They had the guts to kind of, even when they got the lead, they said, we're going to still do this because we're just going to keep the pressure on them and smother them here. But, I mean, at one point in the game, Daniel Jones was like 17 for 21, and he was like leading the team in rushing by a significant number. And you're going, damn, he's hanging in there and playing great. And then, of course, he threw the pick six, and the whole thing fell apart. And sure, that was his mistake, yeah. But it's hard as an ex-quarterback to look at him and go, how could you make that mistake? How dare you make that mistake as you're under the most pressure out of any quarterback I've ever seen in my life? Like, I'm not embellishing that. That was the, that was the biggest beatdown of an offensive line that I really can ever remember. I mean, that's how drastic of a butt whooping Seattle put on that Giants O line last night. And Pete Carroll enjoyed every second of it. Every <laughs> time they showed him on camera after one of those plays, he was thrilled. <laughs> he was. Now, he was coming back to the place where he was the head coach for one year with the Jets and got fired, won a Super Bowl in that stadium 10 years ago. So there was a little extra something special right. for him. But also, it was an opportunity to take his team into prime time and validate for himself and can firm for the world that the Seahawks are a team to be taken seriously. Yeah. And any other team on the schedule, starting with the Bengals, who will see the Seahawks in two weeks, Seahawks have a bye in week five, you're on notice of what this defense can do. The key is keeping those guys healthy, but if you can put your best guys out there, they're going to swallow you up. You better have a plan. You better have an answer. You better be able to block them. Because they are coming, and they are never going to stop. And it's going to be one play after another, after another, after another. Yeah. So we've got the 49ers, yeah. the Cowboys, the Eagles, the Lions, and the Seahawks. Uh-huh. I'm Those with you. Those are the five teams That's right. that have emerged from 
the the cluster of 16 NFC teams. And you got the Buccaneers kind of like, hey, pay attention to us. But they'll get their chance to prove it week six when they host the Lions. That game got shifted to 425 p.m. Eastern. Some would, would, would prefer that it got taken all the way to 8 o'clock Eastern in lieu of Giants at Bills. But at least we get to watch Josh, watch Josh Allen that night. Right. So um, back to the Giants, though. Yeah. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.